So the Falcons were preparing to punt, and I had been shooting by the Saints bench, and I was going to move to the end zone so I could shoot Drew Brees and the Saints coming at me. Shooting punts is not really something I normally did, but at the time, I stopped and just kind of lined up the Atlanta punter. I know exactly where I was. I was actually on the Saints sideline. We're on the sideline. I was in the north end zone. We were looking down. Unfortunately, I was at the other end of the field from where the play happened. And as he took the snap, this white streak kind of came in from the left side of my frame. I just sort of mashed down the shutter. Look out! Right through! The kickoff by Steve Gleason! And it is scooped and scored! And Curtis Deloach! Touchdown! New Orleans! The world was again watching the Superdome. And hearing it too. For nearly a minute after Gleason's punt block, the television broadcasters remained silent as 75,000 Saints fans gave their city back its voice. This is a shared experience in the body politic of the entire country. And you don't want to trump it by trying to believe that you can say something more important than what you are watching. You are hearing this noise, you are watching these people. You're watching what so many in that place thought was an absolute rebirth. And that's what that moment sort of became known as, the rebirth of New Orleans. at least to the rest of us. I think for him, it was just business as usual. This is the fourth year in a row. Steve Gleason's blocked a punt. He's a specialist in that category. A punt block is one of the rarest plays in football. They, a good team makes a punt block every two years, maybe three years. The scheme is an interior stunt where I cross from the right aid gap to the left aid gap. But in order to block a punt that way, the person who's in charge of getting clean, Steve Gleason, his timing has to be clean. He can't get tripped up or he can't get caught off balance and maybe hit one of his own rushers. It sets up perfectly and, and Steve comes underneath and get, get, gets a free run at the punt and it was like a shotgun blast. I have to this day never heard a sound more meaningful than that football hitting Steve Gleason's hands when he blocked it. Everybody was jumping up, screaming, hollering, high-fiving, and, and crying. It was just electric. Most beer spilled on any football play in history. Probably. Nobody was drinking. I <laughs> promise you nobody was drinking, because it was all on the floor. That's right. Even those watching in a FEMA trailer that night, like Shelton Alexander and his family, felt the power of the rebirth. From that moment, that was us taking our stand. We back, you know, and nothing is going to stop us. It was like getting a, a, you know, a new heart. It's like getting a heart transplant, you know. It's like a scene in a movie where after all the, the beating we'd taken over the last year, finally, we get a punch in ourselves. Yeah, it's, it's, it's something... It's hard to put into words. Give me a minute. It was like everything that ever happened good in your life, all at one time. It was uh, your, your first communion, it was your birthday, it was your graduation, it was your first date, getting married. And then in the back of your mind, it was people you lost, the trials and tribulations that the city went through. To have that type of emotion on a high, you're going to have a great loss. So I'll be very happy if I don't have that high again. Once things had calmed down a little bit, which was about 10 minutes, uh, I looked down and I rolled through my photos and I couldn't believe what was there. And I, I knew I had something special. I, I put it in a bag, 
to send back to the editors. And uh, you know, I put stars all over it, and I, you know, it's like a little girl drawing in the in the uh, margins of her notebook. You know, I was, all I needed was a little unicorn in there, and uh, Michael loves Steve. <laughs>